Um, so that is, and we'll start our discussion. Now, are we going to put the G, is it going to be our first thing, we making it 16? Is that how the motion read? Okay. So that is actually um, uh, the matter, it, actually a report from Dr. Bain. But I will say this, um, there were some items in it that were, should be executive session, and there were some not. So I appreciate your motion, Ms. Huddle, so that we can bring it out here. And um, I think I'll let Dr. Ross, I'll let you introduce that and, and talk about it and the pu purpose of it. And yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, on um, August the 28th, I entered an agreement, or District 5 entered an agreement after approval from the board with uh, Angela Bain Consulting. Uh, the description of the uh, consulting services were uh, sevenfold. One, to conduct system audits, uh, to review organizational structure, to um, write improvement plans as directed by the superintendent, conduct system audits in the area of finance, operations, student services, and benefits, to develop appropriate systems in management and tracking FTEs, to develop and implement any training or coaching uh, for staff as necessary, advice to the superintendent in planning, including monthly planning and organizational calendar. Uh, uh, Dr. Bain uh, asked for 17 uh, um, different documents to uh, help in her assessment uh, to, uh, for that advice. Uh, those items included um, a detail of all purchase services by category um, and by account category a detailed report of all capital accounts, which is our 500 code, which included uh, all uh, consultants by the district uh, account centers, or DAC, a, a, and I'll give you a copy of all these. A review uh, of expenditures for all capital accounts, all grant management reports, uh, the latest budget uh, reports provided at uh, public board meetings, organizational chart, uh, organ operations budget, that's a staff to include salaries of that staff, current HR budget and staff to include salaries of that staff, uh, current maintenance budget and staff to include salaries of that staff, current curriculum division budget and staff and include salaries of that staff, uh, current uh, student services and staff to include uh, salaries of that staff, public information and office budget and staff to include salaries of that staff. The current strategic plan, the latest Cognia report, uh, current uh, parenting plan, a list of uh, current construction projects and timelines for completions, uh, current payroll budgets, and uh, all open POs, and inventory of all maintenance and equipment and supplies. Uh, that information was uh, compiled by my office and uh, submitted to Dr. Bain. On October the 14th at 10 p.m., she concluded a draft of uh, the recommendations. I received it on October the 15th, and that recommendation is submitted in uh, package uh, exhibit F were uh, a total of 19, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, 19 recommendations uh, and outlines of, um, of why those recommendations were made. Um, one of the, the, I would ask that the, after reviewing this, and I haven't had a chance to uh, deep dive into it, I uh, do want to thank uh, uh, Dr. Bain for doing this work and doing the, the legwork on this work. Um, I would ask, or my ask, and it doesn't have to have any action right now, but for the board to consider uh, amending the contract uh, where it says consultant reports to Dr. Akil E. Ross Sr., uh, that it says consultant reports to permanent superintendent. It is my belief, well, this is, this is great work and work that needs to be done. Uh, I believe that this... Um, uh, the, the outline of prioritizing this and, and actually um, addressing these concerns uh, needs to be with the permanent superintendent. Right. I appreciate that. 
Um, and you would say this, this was, one goal of this is efficiency, um, f finding ways that we can not only do our job better, but do we have enough staff at certain places? Are we overstaffed in another place? You know, it, it's just an about, and it, it's such an array of subjects. It's like, I agree with you, that's something that the, the permanent superintendent should take on, and it won't be all done at one time. And it, it's, I think, um, would be an aid for uh, the permanent superintendent to come in and, and be able to catch up really quickly mm -hmm. uh, to, um, uh, to kind of get a, an, an, an idea of what those policies, procedures, those practices are. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a great organization, but it's a big organization. So to catch up, to, to, to have that outside audit um, uh, and advisement from a uh, sitting superintendent is a, is a benefit. And I think it's really, it, she's very, as a consultant, I know she does consulting all over the state, but she's been a superintendent and she's been an HR person and she's been in District 5. So I, I think she knows her, she knows the subject. Uh, Ms. Huddle, get your hand up. Mr. Lovers, I saw I, I just hand. wanted to make the comment that, that we passed earlier under item F, uh, 3F, the procurement auditor. And um, you made the motion, right, Ms. Huddle? And that, that, that this, this document really is a, a document that should be given to that procurement auditor to follow up on. This is a roadmap to look at the items so that, you know, that they have been vetted so that she or he, the, 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 uh, meaning the auditor, can uh, follow through and, and look at the documents. She's given, she's, Miss, Miss uh, Bain has given the information for the auditor. So I, I just want to say that that to me is a roadmap for that auditor to use in, in that regard. Ms. Huddle. Um, I, I echo those comments and I would just um, ask the executive leadership for when you're setting the agenda if we could put Dr. Ross's proposed motion on a, on a either the next board meeting or, or, or soon thereafter. And also that we release um, Ms. Baines. I realize we had a draft report, mm -hmm. but that would also give us an opportunity to release her report. Redacted, of course, for the things that are that can't be um, you know, confidential, but that we um, would give us an opportunity to release her final report at that time. The other thing I'd like to make the point, and I know there's almost no one left in here, and I get that because it's really late, but um, you know, as Mr. Lovell said, there's a lot of procurement items in here. I also think that um, Dr. Ross's suggestion is good because these are largely things that have gone on for years. So they are in, they're in no way a reflection of, of our current leadership. They're an opportunity to understand maybe some shortfalls that we've had and making sure that those um, holes are closed. Thank you, Ms. Huddle. So anybody, any comments on that? All right, we will go to item, uh, let's see, where am I, guys? Uh, Oh, the real 16, that was what was messing me up. Discussion appointment to Richland County Board of Assessment Appeals. This is just the discussion. Um, I will explain to the board, um, for some reason, the administration before us and also uh, the former su the superintendent before Dr. Uh, Ross, this has been a vacancy that none of us knew about. <laughs> and I want to thank Ms. Gardner for, they kept, and Ms. White, they kept saying, when are y'all gonna feel that? And I didn't really, I had to learn about it myself. So in an officer's meeting, we, we talked about people to um, contact, because you know they have to say they do it, and we have to have board approval. So um, one of the, the um, it's in your packet, but um, Jeff Herring has, has graciously accepted to do that, and he had some background in because um, it's the Board of Assessment and Appeals. And I, as far as I know, Lexington doesn't do it. it, it you know, I didn't even know about it. It's the Richland County thing. And Ms. Gardner, different entities ha get to appoint some. Is that right? If you'll address it, because they, they told it, to, and we didn't know it wasn't filled, and, and so they at, kept saying, when are you going to get this done? So we're bringing it to you tonight in discussion, and we'll vote on it after you've... Right. Yeah, I Talked think about it. we were, um, the Richland County Board of Assessment of Appeals 
has a seat on it for every school district. We get to appoint someone to be on that particular board, um, and they meet every once a month, and they go through the appeals process. And so we thought that um, Jeffrey Herring would be a good um, appointment for this school district because he represents us well, and he has um, some background in real estate and things like that. So um, if that's okay, I'd like to make a motion. Well, do we need the motion? I, I was thinking we would discuss it where everybody could see us, you know, if they had any we had other. to vote on it, so I don't know. Okay, Ms. Moore. I just have, I have a question. So this position isn't something that we would open up to the community and vet communities to apply for. This is a position that we as a board pick for that role? I have Ms. White that's going to address that as chair. It, it, that, I, can, I, can, I can bring it to you. It's appointment. It's, there's no pay in it. It's not a paid, paid right. job. Uh, it's a volunteer, mm -hmm. basically. Um, and, the, and it has, you know, obligations of meeting. So it, it's new to me too, but I'm gonna let Ms. White, would you tell her how it is something that um, how, it I don't operates. Know how it's been I don't know how it's been done in the past. I don't know if the board me, I didn't know about in it. the past has voted on approving this person or if it's just been the chair that's done it. We we did um, vote on it one, uh, one time um, in the past when I was the first year we were on the board, we did vote on it. Okay. Um, so, um, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing unusual about the, the board chair reaching out to somebody to say, might you be interested in it, or for any board member doing that. But ultimately, the board has to approve it, since it is a board appointment. It's not just the board uh, chair yeah. appointment. The problem is, and I just noticed this in looking at the agenda, is y'all have got it down here as discussion agenda and not, and not action agenda. That's what I, yeah. So, so y'all can discuss it tonight if anyone else has ideas about someone else well, who that's might, why I put who it might on be discussion. interested in it besides Mr. Herring. And then what you'll need to do is put it down as an action item when you meet in December for your December meeting. Because it mm -hmm. is right now just discussion. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 well, I, th I think, you know, that was the way I thought it was the discussion so everybody can see who, who I called and appointed with board approval. Ms. Hines. So, yeah, so um, I, you know, when I was talking to Dr. Ross about um, this and I was asking, you know, who was in this position before, he didn't know. And so I, I understand that it was vacant, but then Mr. Loveless just said that he um, was a part of a vote to appoint someone. I'm just curious as to what the standard well, of procedure is for these types of appointments so that we don't set bad precedent moving forward. It's not that I don't you know, like Mr. Herring at all. It has nothing to do with who um, we appointed. It's more about what that process looks like. I know that a lot of times, um, you know, for Zoning Board of Appeals for different municipalities, there's a call to action to say, hey, if you're interested in this position, um, put forth your name. I didn't see this in, until our, um, our board packet came out. So um, it's not, like I said, it's not about the person that is here. I'm just, I would like before we um, vote on this, just to see what the procedures and the rules are um, and what, you know, how our, our neighboring school districts are, are handling this position. Ms. Ms. Hines, um, I will have Ms. Gardner send you the information that we sent out to Mr. Herring, because it explains it. And I have no problem with I have no problem with it being the discussion and then voted on the next time. But we are under the gun that it's gone this long, not done. Can I make a motion? Can I ask? If you let me finish talking. Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm going to tell John D on you. <laughs> and then, Madam Chair, after the board members finish, I've got a suggestion. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to hear Mr. Lovitz. Yes. I, what I was going to ask was, could we vote to suspend the rules for this one issue? Is that is that uh, acceptable from the uh, Robert You mean to suspend the rules to go ahead and vote on it this yeah. evening? I wouldn't do that. Okay. I would advise against that. No, and I, I don't want to do that as chair. I, I, I certainly, I can tell you that um, just finding somebody that has the time, right. that works, that's good and knows what's happening in, in you know, with, and knows, has some background of real estate, it says it should be that. And, and, you know, they have to look at it and know they have the time. 
and Mr. Herring told me he had the time, and he and I know he, he's an, has an impeccable resume to to do it and willing. But this will give you guys that want to, you know, be sure about everything. That's right, Miss Hammond. I yeah, do want to be I, sure about everything. I did. I said that, Miss Hines. I, I don't need you to reiterate it. Well, and if I could make a suggestion going forward, I, I think I, it would be. I think it would be important too to look at how it's been done in the past. I will tell you, for example, um, you know, in some in some school districts, whenever there's a vacancy on the board, their local legislation provides that the board can appoint someone to that position. This is akin to that in a way. Um, and, and boards that that have those kinds of situations, um, what what I've told those boards because they've called me to say what process should mm -hmm. we use is that they they ask people who are interested in um, in applying for that. For that position to submit a letter of interest to the board and then the board then interviews those those individuals um, in executive session and or they could do it in open session um, e either either way and then the board um, then there's a recommendation made by the board for a certain person a nomination um, that might have been what's been done in the past and that's what I would recommend y'all do moving forward now where we are right now you've already had a conversation yeah. with Mr. Herring and again you didn't do anything wrong in having that no. conversation just asked if he'd do it, if he'd serve. Well, yeah, if That's he'd all. do and it, this, which does mean that the board couldn't, y'all couldn't come forward with somebody but, else when you meet in December and say, well, this other person is interested as well. Ms. White, I want to make this clear. I've been on this board 16 years. I've never been asked about this. And if we voted on it, you know, I don't remember that. I'm not saying we didn't. But I'm saying as far as the board being asked and being told about, I didn't even know it existed. And so the whole time I was chair, even before Dr. Ross was here, nobody in the district office told me we had a process for it or that we needed to do it. And if it was not for Ms. Gardner, who as our secretary was getting the information and saying, we've got to find somebody, you need to you know, call around and see. So I was never shown a process. Right. And, and so well, I really don't- that's why I'm saying you didn't, you no, did but what I'm, you thought was the best I'm thing I'm saying, do. yeah, but you're saying, you, you give an example of other, other things that you know about. I'm telling this board that's having problems with thinking we did it wrong, I'm letting this board know it's not even anything I have seen us do as a board in 16 years by other board chairs and other boards. So it's kind of a new thing. So I have no problem, no problem ha having anybody sitting on this board. You bring us all the names you want to bring us, call anybody you want to call, and we will certainly vet them all, okay? And we'll vote on it next time. That's how I feel. Ms. Gardner. Well, I, I just want to point out too that, that we did ask more than one person and people weren't available to do this. So it's not like people are beating our door down to do this, mm -hmm. number one. And I agree with, with Ms. Hammond, if we have if this was ever in something in the past, it was given to us as a board and we had to vet it on our own and we had an opportunity to vote and that was all that happened. If it did, I don't remember it happening either. Um, but I think I'll just say this because I was a part of making sure we did the agenda right. I thought that this was going to be on action tonight. So I feel like we need to apologize to Mr. Herring for putting it out there, asking him to do this, him agreeing and then us kicking the can down the road for a month. And also to the Richland County, you know, Board of Appeals, they have a lot of vacancies. They can't actually listen to appeals. We're holding them up. So I feel that this is very, this is wrong. I, I, I know that that's what the agenda says and I had an opportunity to, to change it. But just so you know, in the past two or three months, we have voted on discussion agenda because we've always been told we can vote any time. We, anybody can make a motion at any time. That's what we've been told from the beginning. So. I, I'm okay with us moving forward and putting this on the next month, but it was supposed to be on action agenda. That's an oversight. And, and we have voted on discussion items for every meeting. You can go back and look. So I know we can't change it now or we can agree to do whatever we need to do, but I feel like this is a debacle. Well, this, because this is created, you know, being purely compliant with FOIA if something is on the discussion agenda, 
the public thinks it's just going to be discussed and not voted on. So that's why it should be down as an action item, not a discussion item. Now, if you had a situation where something was totally non-controversial and you had it on the discussion item and someone made a motion to, to approve it and there was, no, there was no controversy or discussion about it, technically are you complying with FOIA? No, but it, it doesn't result in any kind of a challenge because it's not controversial at all. But really, if you're going to vote on something, it should be on the, the action agenda as opposed to on the discussion agenda. Now, we could have moved this at the beginning of the meeting. I just now realized it as we were sitting, you know, as I was sitting there, that it was not on the, on the action agenda. It could have been moved at the beginning with the two-thirds vote and the fact that it really is an emergency in the sense that the, it's holding up the, the real estate board. Um, but that, that didn't occur, so it is what it is at this point in time. So my recommendation is that you defer it until you meet in December and that you just let Mr. Herring know that, um, you know, his, his, that we appreciate his interest in it and that his name oh, will yeah. certainly be, be put forth um, at the meeting in December. Yeah, and we'll look forward to those that want to find other people. We'll look forward to you bringing us some names. And I agree with Ms. Gardner that I will apologize to Mr. Heron. I had no idea at all that this would not, you know, that this would be in any kind of controversy. Ms. Hammond, may I? If it's not going to be real long. Go ahead. Ms. Hammond, um, this was not about wanting to bring forward a name. It was more about how we put out a call to action on whether on on who would be interested in this position. Um, you know, when the board officers talk about it and the rest of the board isn't a part of it, um, you know, I get your it point. Is, it is what it is. But what I'm saying is, like county council, when they're trying to put out uh, put out some uh, somebody to be appointed to one of their boards, they literally put out something on their social media saying, hey, we have this position that needs to be filled on this particular board. Anybody that's interested should apply. It's not about, let me bring in Joe Smith to recommend him. Well, I think we've talked this enough. We get your point, and that's what we're going to do. So I hope you feel better about the process. Thank you. It's late. We're going to move on. Uh, that is discussion. We're going to listen to Ms. White about that, and we'll bring it forth on action the next time, and we will have a process. Dr. Ross, if you want to let um, Ms. White, you know, advertise that, find out from maybe uh, Richland, another Richland school, because Lexington doesn't do this, and find out what their process is. And I'll certainly meet the uh, criteria of a process, and we will bring any... It's late. Anybody who is, yeah. So that it's open to anybody who is interested in being considered for that position, that you simply place something on the district website yeah. and say that the, the you know, district um, gets one appointment on the board of, you know, whatever it's called, appraisals assessment. and assessments. Board of assessments. Um, and that anyone who was interested in being considered for that appointment should submit a letter to um, I would just have it to the Dr. superintendent's Ross. office yeah. by such and such a date. Thank you. Yeah, Ten days, you know, Thank and you. let people, and then those names, um, and they should say why they're interested, mm -hmm. you know, what their background is and why they are interested. That, and they can and send I a can resume. help Amanda, you know, put that on the website tomorrow, what we need to say, and that'll take Thank care you. of it. That's, that, that'll make me happy. Thank you. Um, so we're at item 17, discussion to the vesture of the old Chapin High School property on Columbia Avenue in Chapin. And I see Mr. Coon has been so nice back there waiting on this to hear from us, I'm sure. Ms. Yes. Hammond, um, I know we can't vote on this tonight, yeah. but um, I wanted to bring up kind of timing on this. Mm -hmm. I know that um, the good folks of Chapin would like some time to conduct a feasibility study. Um, but I also know that um, we're hoping that the, the funds from this and perhaps some other things could help us put some walls up at some schools and that kind of work has to be done in the summer. And so um, just to food for thought for our next meeting, I don't think we have enough time for next summer, but our capital budget's usually approved around March. So if we were looking at the summer of 2023, if I did my math right, that's about 16 months or so. So just food for thought maybe for our next meeting. 
Uh, also, if you don't, if you'll give me just a minute, I would also like to say that, um, and I've expressed my disappointment with some folks over how this happened, but um, I don't think anyone on this board ever in a public meeting that I was in ever said we were going to sell this to the highest bidder. And I've gone back and watched our board meetings. Um, that's like watching paint dry, I know sometimes, but um, I don't think it's ever been said in there, and it um, was not a surprise. It was talked about at um, two board meetings as well as some facility committee meetings, and I just don't want anyone in the town of Chapin thinking that we were trying to sell this without letting anyone know, because that was absolutely never the intention of this board. I appreciate that, because I don't know where uh, those rumors started, and I certainly hope it wasn't with any board members. Um, I'd like to say how important the relationship is with Chapin. We certainly agree that you have the right to to come to us and give give us a proposal, and we look forward to uh, allowing you to do that. And I think this whole board knows how important relationships are with with every one of our communities, not just Chapin, but Dutch Fork and Irmo. So um, I think it, it, we will leave that to Dr. Ross to invite uh, the Chapin Town, the mayor and whoever, to present to us any ideas that they have, and we will look forward to hearing it. I would, I would like to say, though, that, that we did vote uh, last meeting to start the process. Uh, Dr. Ross identified, his staff identified this and another property, a surplus property, and the vote was taken and that uh, we intend to, we, we hope that the superintendent is moving ahead with his staff to uh, work on appraisals. There was one other portion of that that we were studying whether to, um, to demolish the old buildings or leave them standing, uh, you, know, for the, you know, for the purpose of sale of the property, which would be more valuable to us. So, but we do have uh, immediate needs in two or three of, the, of our schools that I know of to, uh, to use these funds. And, you know, the, the purpose of the school board is to, uh, you know, take care of our students. And, and I, I hope that we're moving ahead. I would hope that the town of Chapin could move ahead on a parallel track and that they could uh, do what they need to do while we're getting appraisals and, and going through the process. We do not, and I'll repeat, we do not have any offers and haven't had any offers to purchase that. this property. These were things that the superintendent identified in order to free up funds, that and another piece of property. We talked about four pieces of property in our facilities committee. We did it properly. We did everything we, we should have done. We brought it in here for a vote. and, and uh, so therefore, I think the superintendent should move ahead with getting appraisals. Okay, thank you. Any other comments on that? We'll go to 18, Discussion of Facilities Committee Study, Phase 2 Building Program. Is that gonna be Mr. Beatenball? Or I don't know if you're on. Your mic's not on. I'll say we, while we're waiting on you, we had a, I, I did attend the facilities committee meeting where we had a, a, a presentation and it was a good discussion. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm sorry, Ms. Hammond. I was trying to respond, Dr. Ross. We do have the appraisal process going for all of our, or three of our properties, and uh, uh, we hope to bring that to our next board meeting uh, with those appraisals, just for information. So, uh, so that that process process has been started, and hopefully, have it closed out by then. So, so I wanted to address that. So, your next question, Ms. Hammond. I'm sorry. So now we're on uh, phase two building program, and, and I'll kind of lead and just fill in the blanks where, I, where I'll, I'll leave the, the holes there. Uh, this was a review of the uh, MBCon construction study that was done February 19th. Uh, we looked in that report, and we wanted to itemize which were the, um, the highest concerns, and we had uh, areas where we had buildings or facilities rated as poor. 
Uh, those facilities were Irmo High School, um, Nursery Road, um, Har H, uh, Harbison West Elementary School, and the district office. Um, as you know, that uh, the number one school on the list was, was Irmo High School. Um, we are addressing that uh, with the thanks to the board with the 50 million, really $49 million to build a new East Wing. Uh, we have just approved through energy savings uh, addressing the ceiling or the roof at, um, or the air conditioners, I'm sorry, HVAC and on the Irmo House Skill Gym. Uh, so the question was, what happens with phase two? Uh, as you heard, we will use the energy savings, uh, and we talked about this in the facilities meeting. We moved uh, Harbison West and, and Nursery Road down to our, our third on the list because of what it takes to actually get those walls up in the time. And as a result, um, we moved the uh, gym at, uh, or the activities building at Irmo High School uh, forward and uh, Dutch Fork Elementary School, which was rated at fair in the MBCon report. But uh, many of you have heard about the issues of the, of the ceiling. We believe that with energy savings and ESSER and that clock, we can get these projects done faster than we can. And we have the funding um, right now to do those two projects. So in our phase two, which uh, I know we talked about is really phase 1A, but our phase two, based on what we can accomplish with the funding we have and the timeline that we have, uh, we recommend uh, the um, activities facilities at Irma High School and uh, Dutch Fork uh, Elementary, pushing to the, the next level would be once we can get the funding, the walls at um, uh, Nursery Road and Harbison West, and then the, the latter piece would be the district office. I know there was um, a discussion about the, the $750,000 that was approved for that. Uh, we are, are looking, and Ty, Mr. Bima, would you explain that, that piece as well? Yes, sir. Uh, also, I would like to add, Dr. Ross, that uh, we are gonna be doing an investment grade audit at Harbison West and Nursery Road at some time in the near future, so we'll get exact cost to bring back to the board. Uh, to look at energy savings or whatever method for future. Uh, so we have, you have approved money for the uh, district office and for Palmetto Woods. We've uh, run into some problems at Palmetto Woods. So we have another consultant, plumbing consultant coming out to look at that. So we haven't moved forward. It's, it's uh, we wanna make sure we do the right thing and, and are good stewards of the money. So after we get that problem resolved, we'll bring that back to the board and see what our options are. So we will not, we right now do not plan on spending that money at this, at this stage. Thank you. Is there any questions on that? I had that up high. Um, we appreciate all the work on that. I, 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 if, uh, if we're going to call this phase 1A, Dr. Ross, um, and, you know, for for the ESSER money, which I understand, and that's what we're going to do. But I'm, after that, I think that we ought to we ought to look at the entire focus. And I think Ms. Hammond, you brought this up at, at one of the past meetings. But but to look at the entire focus of what we plan to do in those clusters, you know, that we're talking about. So I mean. I, while, while I agree that the ESSER funds and the use of those are important at this point in time, you know, I do think that, that after that, we need to a, a come together over what we, you know, wh what we intend to do for the remainder of the, of the schools. And, you know, we, we've, we've talked about, and just for example, I mean, we've talked about um, a, a a district, a new district office and a new district maintenance facility, which would be common to all the clusters. I mean, just that in itself, can we look at the properties that we, that we have that are existing that might be recycled into something that's better, you know, a better use? And I don't think that we should charge off, you know, with a definite plan on phase two until we've, until we've had a chance to look into that. But I do agree phase 1A being the ESSER funds, you know, and that's, that's, those are my thoughts. 
That's correct. I think each phase, and, and whether we call it one or two, I think each phase needs to stick with its financing source. Yeah. So um, one has a very different financing source than phase two. And if we keep these phases by the way we're paying for it, I think it would help us in organizing our thoughts here. So, so good point. Um, I'd like to ask um, Mr. Loveless if he thinks that maybe the facilities committee could also look at, before we even look at phase two um, or three, that some underlying or guiding principles and with, you know, it, everything from enrollment, you know, looking at enrollment, looking at how does dist redistricting or zoning affect schools, uh, philosophies on energy efficiency, just some kind of guiding principles so that before we say, well, we need, we need to redo the district office or we need to redo this school, that we're kind of looking at our, our philosophies there. And, and, and I think it's really important for our community because, you know, we lately, the last school we built, the enrollment people said we didn't really have enough students to go there. So philosophically, are we going to build and improve students where we already have, I mean, schools where we already have students, or are we looking to buy land and build schools where maybe we don't already have students? And um, I mean, I have a definite opinion on that, but at least I'd like to see the, the group talk about that before we undertake any more construction. I, I think you put that more succinctly than I did, but that's exactly what I meant, and I think that'd be, if I know Ms. Gardner, that would be music to her ears because she's been talking about this for, for two years. So, um, you know, I think we all, you know, that's exactly what, you know, what, what I was referring to. That, and we talked about being creative with, with the thoughts, like you're saying. <clears throat> there were boards before us that, that have, and that's been talked about a lot, and I hope this board will take action on it. And, okay. Um, we have item 19, discussion of adoption of the 2021 South Carolina Model School Procurement Code, Exhibit M. Um, our CFO, Ms. Marty Rawls, will come forward and uh, present the um, Model School Procurement Code. Not the whole thing, but you know. Not the whole thing, yeah. <laughs> um, I included in the uh, exhibit of the proposed procurement code for the 2021 model school code. Um, also included in there is a memo from the State Department. Um, actually, it's from the Division of Procurement Services, excuse me, where they are recommending that we adopt this as it has been presented. So the State Department did a lot of research, a lot of time putting this uh, model code together based on the adjustments that were made to the state procurement code. Um, the major changes would be in section 1550 with the um, dollar values. So where a small purchase from the 2011 code was $2,500, they are increasing that to a $10,000 limit. Um, really, because $2,500 in 2011 is not what $2,500 is in 2021. It would really benefit the district to be able to move forward on purchases that formerly would have had to have been advertised or had to get quotes. So the, like I said, the recommendation is that we adopt this as it has been presented. Um, the, the pieces that we are asking the board to review um, would begin on page 120 of your um, packet, that exhibit M, and that's the exemptions. Um, what we did was we made two recommendations for changes in that, and that is 2C, where we're talking about software that has been adopted. It has already been competitively bid, and if they have upgrades or if there are renewals, to be able to execute those renewals without having to go out for bid again and again. Um, that would just, it would, let me give you a for instance, our accounting system. To transition to a new accounting system would be a major undertaking. Whereas if there are no issues with what we have and we can continue with that system, it would be more advantageous for us because it doesn't put the staff on a learning curve. That The system that we have is so integrated in everything that we do from HR to finance 
to security, to employee leave. It, it, is, it is a complete enterprise system. And so for us to have to change that would be a major undertaking that would really put the district in a negative situation more than more of a positive situation. That would be an example of that situation. Um, the other recommendation for an edit would be an eight um, adding an F to where state adopted science kits and refurbishments would be an exemption as well. But I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, I have a question. So it's on a discussion agenda for tonight, and this might be a question for Ms. White, but we'll start. So um, obviously we're, we'll need a vote at a future board meeting. Yes. Um, unlike a policy revision, though, do we can we just do it with one vote, or would we need two two board votes. To my understanding, it can be one vote. I, it could, it's just a one vote. My, my plan would be to have it on an action agenda for December. Okay. okay. I mean, I would just recommend it's really late. And I have, excuse me, my own like whole list of questions because I did go through it. Mm -hmm. And it's not as simple as just adopting it. There's several places in blue that you can read where there are options in it. Um, I also have a lot of questions about the exemptions. I don't want to take everybody's time when we're all tired. We do have a procurement committee meeting before our next board meeting. So I might recommend that we make this the main topic of that meeting. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. That sounds good. Okay. And, Is that good for you, Ms. Rawls? If you have any questions, I mean, if you want to submit those, I'll be happy to research yeah. the answers and that way we can everybody would be on the same page when we get into That'd be a good. meeting so i'm happy to review that because it is um 10 22 and there are people that have to get up in the morning and be at work um so that's what we'll do miss rawls and thank you miss huddle for that 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 suggestion and number 20 Ms. where's Ms. Ms. Hammond, i have a question just oh, on, on this uh, yeah just um for the procurement meeting that we would have in december uh, could Ms. Rawls be present to answer yes. questions? Um, Dr. Ross, is that okay? Yes, okay. Yes, ma'am. So we, we have planned to uh, do that, and I will be absent on that one. Uh, but if you can you know, take that as for me. Well, and I think Ms. Rawls just said that she would take questions, and we can submit them before, and she'll be at that meeting to answer them. I thought that's what she said. Thank you. Uh, number, I'm looking at Mr. Hogan. For number 20. Chairwoman Hammond, I'd like to uh, make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Uh, Ms. Moore seconds. All those in favor? Meeting adjourned. Lots of work. Y'all did good. <laughs> <laughs>